Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So it's an honor to have you here on campus, sir. So any, you, sir. So any uh, nostalgic feelings since you've come back to campus after long time, sir? You know, I was just mentioning to Professor Raman something that uh, many of us are alumnus of uh, different institutes. Yes. Like I am an alumni of uh, MS University for my pharmacy. I am an alumni here. I am an alumni of Harvard. Um, but there is one thing that distinguishes the SIBM alumni. is the pride it takes in the association. So when we come back to campus, we don't feel that we are coming back uh, to visit where we studied, but the lingering feeling that we are still part of the uh, say journey continues. So there is a lot of pride as alumnus in SIP. I think that probably is the biggest feeling I have when I come back. Uh, I've come here in 2014 for my uh, I think batch reunion, 25 years batch reunion. Last year, I think sometime I came when I think the institute honored me as the best alumnus of the year. So I'm very, very uh, connected with the institute, and I feel uh, there's a sense of pride in associating with this. Yes. So firstly, sir, sir, since you mentioned that you've been through, you've been an alumnus of SIB and Harvard, so you've worked at Baxter and MSD for things. So how have these experiences helped you in your current role at Janssen? So, I think uh, every experience is shape, shapes you. Yes. So, uh, and for example, the uh, the time I spent here in SIBM helped me shape, understand that uh, as a person, I need to have belief, I need to have an understanding and an opinion. I need to be free enough in my mind to express myself and understand the environment better. And this is very different from other management institutes. So that experience is something that I spent 16 years at a company called Hex, which became some of you later on. I learned a lot there because of the, uh, the scientific temper that German companies to have and the way it is to organize itself. I worked at Merck where really value, you know, or MSD as it is known outside the US, the value attached to science was so much higher, the value attached to creating value for the patient was so much higher and it dedicated its life to that, you know, many people dedicated its life in that organization just doing that. 17 Nobel laureates worked in that company. So, you learn what this is all about. Uh, even at Johnson & Johnson, it's all about how, you know, caring for the world one person at a time. This is the kind of feeling that this company has. And so right from the birth of a child, you are associated to the end of the journey in life. You know? So, there is an association. So, you learn through experiences, through people living with patients, you learn so much more about what is, what bothers people. Mm -hmm. And can you lend a hand when they are at their worst, right. or they are at their most difficult situation the biggest learning probably we have had in life. So well, ex every experience teaches you something. Yes. So India being a developing to a low developing country and since you worked in Philippines, so how similar or different is the country in terms of the pharma industry? So I have worked in different healthcare systems. I worked in Germany for probably, probably longer, three years. I worked in Russia in and out. I worked in Philippines. I worked in India. I worked you know, on and off in certain other places also. Every healthcare system is different. Yes. And I think the root is how do we deliver healthcare to people. Philippines and India are not very different. I think healthcare systems are still very early stage. Uh, there, Philippines government has gone a little bit ahead in healthcare financing. They have understood a little better. For example, they have created a sin tax. So sin tax is on tobacco and liquor where they have increased the taxes and those additional money is going to be diverted to healthcare. So they have created healthcare financing mechanism which might stand them in good state over the years. In India, still it is a very complicated game. Healthcare expenditure is still very low, so the delivery is still not there. So there is more challenges in our system, and there is more to do here in our country right now than advanced nations. But advanced nations have other problems. They are spending more on healthcare. Like in Germany now, the kind of society I saw many years ago and now even now that the uh, the people on the age group of more than 70 are increasing rapidly. And that's causing a strain on the economy. Mm -hmm. And that is causing a strain on the taxation for the people who are earning today. So and there is some sense of resentment that is there because of healthcare. That older people need to be taken care of, but I am being higher taxes. Mm -hmm. How do you manage all that? So every country has their different challenges in healthcare. But at the base level, everybody wants to do better for their citizens. So ethics and uh, so ethics IP related problems are something that is a part of pharma sector. So what is your entire opinion on the debate between genetic genetic drugs versus uh, trade violations. 
So first thing, I think my firm belief is intellectual property has to be honored yes. and respected. Because unless intellectual property is respected, there is no future. Hmm. How will you learn to invest in new diseases and issues that are tackling dying, uh, tropic people of public health? There is not enough funding for uh, research. Hmm. And for that funding, intellectual property, respect is probably the most important thing. And that should be non-questionable. What we, the debate between intellectual property and generics and all this happens because we need to create access for medicines. And access for medicines is a huge topic. For example, isn't all multinationals coming together and trying to solve the hepatitis C problem in the world? Aren't they doing enough now in HIV? Isn't world to try to do tackle of Zika virus where everybody is coming together, including my company spending 200 million dollars just like that on Zika virus vaccines. So people have to tackle these issues together. And this is not at cross-purpose. Intellectual property is not at cross-purpose with access to medicines. It is actually the same thing. But people try to create debate over it because the only focus is on price and monopoly rather than creating right access. In India, even if you have the right price, which we have, we are not able to create more access basically because we do not have enough infrastructure, we do not have enough doctors, healthcare professionals, we do not have enough uh, hospitals. So those things are troubling us more and more and we have very low spending on healthcare as a country. So those things are bigger issues uh, than intellectual property or any other issues. So like the issues that you mentioned are uh, the problems that India is facing right now in the pharma sector. So the initiatives like GSC, so how do you think will help the pharma industry as a whole? So uh, GST is actually centered around ease of doing business. The pharma sector benefits are same like many other sectors. For example, you know, imagine people need medicines in time, mm. but if they are held up at check post, border post of states, or entry tax, or hot try, mm. storage of medicines get, can get affected. Imagine vaccines being kept at 45 degrees in Rajasthan by entry tax people. Mm. What will happen to them? So those things, therefore delivery of medicines to people in time will get better. Taxation systems will be more uniform. There will be more uh, you know, respect for how do we conduct trade throughout the country, more you know, elect more e warehousing uh, warehousing improvement will happen, more uh, e pharmacies will come up. So all those things will come up because of GST over the next three to five years. And that intervention is going to be very beneficial from a GST point of view. I think it's one it's a hallmark taxation law. We are waiting for implementation details, but we are hopeful that everything will work out right. The only thing we need to be careful about is what tax rates are being applied. Mm -hmm. Medicines have a certain tax rate of around 12% right now. If they are increased, it can have cascading effect on patients. If they are kept the same, may not be. But let's see where it goes. I think everybody is trying to be sensible about it. So finally, sir, sir you've been through that entire journey. You've been on both sides of the table. So for a student like us who are just about to begin the journey, so what will your advice be? First of all, you know, all of us are still students. Whether you or me, we are still learning every day. I mentioned to everyone in the, in the interaction also that uh, creating better ecosystem on inquiry, formation of opinion based on research and facts, and learning how to respect each other's opinion are probably far more relevant aspects of your education than sometimes learning what you learn in terms of uh, actual subjects. Subjects will teach you, but take interest in those because I tell you all theory was practiced somewhere else and has been written on back as theory. So learning that theory is very, very important. So my advice to all of you is really go all out, be more eco-sensitive, environment sensitive, learn about what's happening around you. I would highly recommend take more interest in public health. That's an important discourse for our country and the world. And enjoy your time here because that only if you enjoy you will learn. This is a great training ground for you to build yourself as a better human being better citizens and ensure that you learn that well in these two years.